Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check before we begin? All right, please type a one in the chat box if you can see the slide. Well, that's different, right? It's a, we're having a slide today. <laughs> okay, all right. And if you can hear my voice, you can see the screen, perfect. Where's everybody from? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Where is everybody from? We have a full house today. <laughs> A. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Awesome. North Carolina, Miami, Dallas, Toronto, Memphis, Western Australia, Hawaii, Boca Raton. I'm from Boca Raton. I'm in Detroit, Michigan right now. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Arizona, kind of early, <laughs> but you guys are done early. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Florida. Hey, my Florida people. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Now, uh, let me remind you that we're recording everything here. So if you're missing uh, something, and if you miss whatever, you know, my routine or, if, if, you know, anything along those lines, you can uh, replay it from London, Atlanta, Arizona. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. We have a packed house today. And uh, this is going to be a three day event. It's actually a huge production to get this show on the road. <laughs> so, all right, so bear with me here. I'm just a trader. So I'm gonna try to do my best today and giving you an insight into my trading technique of what I do and how I make my living into the markets because I have been doing this for quite some time. So you're welcome here in the trading room. We have three days open house. And for those of you that are very new to Trade Out Loud and do not know me, my name is Anka Metcalf. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com. Uh, Trade Out Loud is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, the markets, any kind of market, whether you're trading stocks, futures, forex, cryptos, anything. I have been doing this for the last 18 years professionally. So that means that I quit my job and working from home for the last 18 years. Uh, prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I have spent over 10 years in investment banking. I also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETF since 2010. So this is our 11th year. I also run the Futures Trading Room since 2017. We have created the uh, Futures Program in 2015. And we are running the trading room since 2017. We have over 300 permanent members. Um, I have also managed day trading and swing trading accounts for my clients. Uh, uh, we do offer trading education for uh, stocks and futures. I specialize in high velocity moves. Not sure if we're going to get these high velocity moves today. And we're going to share with you why. But we may get, uh, we may get some moves tomorrow. We're going to talk about that. And I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on price port resistance. You will see some charts with some markings, and these are levels of confluence. This, uh, these levels are basically more than just supply and demand. They are reactionary areas. We also have specific trigger times. You will hear me throughout the trading session today and for, uh, for the next uh, two days mention something like 1030 prime time trigger time. Uh, mentioning 9.45, um, mentioning 11.15, mentioning 11.30. So these are some of the key uh, timings into the market, into the rhythm of the market. And I'll also chart synchronicity and divergency. We're going to take a look at it first thing when we look at charts. But before we uh, continue, please take some time to read the risk disclaimer. And basically what we're saying here is that all the information that will be provided today by Trade Out Loud and of course by myself, it's for educational purpose only should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase, sale or uh, securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a high level of risk may not be suitable for all investors because you could lose money. So before you decide to trade, carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, right? So education plays a major role in here and your risk appetite. All right, so let's continue. If you guys want to get a hold of us, you could go to our website, tradeoutloud.com, or if you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out, info at tradeoutloud.com. Here's some rules. Uh, number one, I don't take any questions into the first hour because this is the power hour that we're focusing on to make money. 
We will allocate time at the end of the trading session for Q&A, so there's not going to be any question unanswered. So, <laughs> all right, so rest assured, small accounts can participate in any trade setups using micros. You don't need to have like a gigantic account to take uh, the trades. I specifically trade uh, full size accounts, however, a uh, full size uh, full size contracts. However, if you decide to trade micro accounts, just a heads up on that. When I call the trade, for example, if I call, let's say, the uh, SP long at a certain price, let's say 4413, for example, uh, please give it at least two to three ticks above because micros are a little bit more volatile and they have the tendency to trigger ahead of the full size contract. And we need to have the full size contract participation in order for the trade to work. Uh, so just a heads up on that, just take it up, uh, uh, just a, a couple of ticks above my entry price. Everything will be mentioned on the mic. Everything will be typed in the trading room. All right. So position sizing is key. Um, for those of you that are very new to position sizing, um, you know, there is this misconception in the futures world that if you have a certain, um, let's say account, uh, that allows you to trade, for example, a contract or two or 10. Uh, well, um, I'm here to break that rule down because that's totally not um, adequate for trading. In trading, you need to position size. So uh, stock traders know a little bit more about position sizing than futures traders. Uh, so in, uh, in the futures, we do recommend you use one to 2%, just like in, the, just like in stock trading, one to 2% of your account size risk per trade. I typically take between one and three trades, maybe four or five trades a day, depending on whether we're scalping or not. But don't expect like a lot of trades. There are not, not a lot of trades that are setting up with high velocity and high precision throughout the trading session. So I do have certain timing that I respect in the market that you guys are going to see. Today's going to be a little bit more difficult, and I'm going to tell you why. And obviously, I did know this ahead of time, right? Okay, so um, uh, please take note of that. So you look at your account size. If your account size, let's say, is $5,000, then your risk per trade is $50. And you have to position size for that. See how many, uh, how many micro contracts you can fit into the risk size that you have. So for example, the risk is the difference between the entry and the stop. And that is the only thing that fluctuates and not your position sizing. All right. Um, what I typically do, uh, well, I actually do 99.99% .99 of the time. I exit uh, because I do trade multiple contracts. I exit half at target one. I take another quarter um, at target two and the rest of the quarter I trail into further targets. So I bank profits early on. That's just me. You don't have to do this. If you have a different trailing strategy, you could definitely apply it to something that is really comfortable for you. Uh, as we're progressing throughout the trade, so after we're hitting, for example, target one or target target one, obviously, I'm going to look to raise my stop as close as possible to a break even level uh, if the technicals permit. If not, we will keep the same stop until we uh, are into an area where we can uh, raise the stop technically. So everything is 100% technical of what we do. Um, all right, so uh, example, here's a quick example of a trade that can be called in the room. So oftentimes, you know, we have new traders in the room that say, okay, what's the first number? What's the second number? What, what does that mean? So for example, if I want to take the e mini SMP, whether long or short, you're going to see ESL for long or S for short. Uh, and for example, the first number is going to be my entry 4431 by this X means by, so we're going to be applying a stop, let's say 33, uh, 40 or 20 or whatever it is. Uh, this is just an example. And the target, let's say we're going to have it 4437, 4441, and anyways, 44, this is the typo right here. So first of all, we have the symbol, we have the direction, we have the entry price times the stop price, and then we're going to have the target. Trades will be called also on the microphone. So before you see the trade that is typed in the room, we discuss it on the mic. And I discuss it from all technical standpoints. And then uh, it's going to be posted numerous times. It's going to be called on the mic. So there's no way I'm missing that. Um, so because it is mentioned on a mic quite a few times and right before the trigger. So you will have ample time for your position sizing. Uh, if the market is fast, 
uh, the trade will be only on the mic. Rare cases where the market is that fast, where I cannot post the trade. But there are uh, there are examples. I trade, so I take my own trade. So uh, I obviously I'm more focused on entering the trade. But I am going to be on the mic 100% of the time. There's not going to be a time where I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a break right now. No. All right. Uh, the other thing is that uh, please be on time. Uh, if you're late, uh, we will not answer the questions that were already discussed into the room. So what you are going to be expecting today, first of all, we're going to dive right into the pre-market game plan. We're going to be analyzing the current market environment. We're going to go over the news and analyzing the impact of price action. Uh, major earnings reports from the prior day. Actually, the only earnings report right now that we had was AMC and AMC is into a weekly rotation. I also posted on my public Twitter feed that is ready to trigger. Uh, also, we're going to be identifying trading opportunities, identifying hats, uh, patterns, waiting for a trade, determining the execution strategy and parameters of the trade, trailing, which is actually the art of trading because you could have a really good trade, but you could mismanage it and you could actually stop with the loss. All right, recap of the session towards the end, towards 11.30 to 12 o'clock and PM planning, a little bit of what you can expect in the afternoon trading session if you're trading on your own. The style of trading that we do, we focus on momentum trading, on scalping, continuation patterns, trend trading, counter trend trading, and swing trading as well. And in fact, we do have a swing trading opportunity right now in, um, in coffee. All right. So um, as far as earnings, you can see them right here. We had AMC that reported earnings last night. They came with like super, super news. They were going to be accepting Bitcoin and all that stuff, and the stock is up. Uh, and this is a big deal because there are a lot of traders that are trading AMC, GME, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the apes. So I am talking about the Wall Street bet guys and all those um, individuals that are pretty much challenging the suits into all of this, uh, into these two stocks in particular. All right, so what we can expect after the close today, and the reason why we do look, even though we are not um, stock traders in here, uh, is we need to see what is moving in the stock market because ultimately all the indices that we're trading on a day-to-day -day basis are moving based upon what the underlying stocks and underlying sectors are trading within the each uh, each index. So for example, if you have wool earnings, Amazon earnings, and uh, Apple earnings, definitely your focus is going to be on NASDAQ. All right, so this is it for today. Pre-market, we didn't have a lot of uh, influencing stocks that um, may have had uh, you know a huge impact into our four indices. After the close today, again, we have McAfee and Fubo that I will be watching. Those are going to impact tomorrow's trading session, and we're going to be talking about those tomorrow. Major economic releases for the day. Today is Tuesday. It is August 10th, and it is 9.17 a.m. Eastern. We're literally uh, closing in on the open. Uh, we have... Uh, basically low impact news, but we have the US Senate that is to vote on the infrastructure bill at 11 o'clock. So I'm not expecting the market to do anything uh, into 11 o'clock. So obviously as with any open, we're gonna see the influx of the contracts that are coming in. Uh, however, I'm not expecting a big move today. The big move is going to come after this infrastructure bill. I have no idea and I think nobody knows because you can see the market is not positioned higher or lower at this point. It's not running ahead of the infrastructure bill and it's not dumping ahead of the infrastructure bill. So everybody's waiting. All the institutions are waiting for this to pop up. And then tomorrow, I think we're going to have a lot better price action when we come into the morning session. And that is because at 8.30, we have the CPI and the core CPI. These are big market movers in the morning. We come here back at 10 o'clock. We will discuss the impact of this news, but that is tomorrow. And tomorrow, we also have crude oil inventories. And on Thursday, we're going to wrap it up with the PPI. Uh, in the futures news, we also have big news that is coming in at the end of this week. Micro Treasury yield contracts are set for this Sunday night, August 15th, and they're going to start trading on August 16th. So that's very exciting for, uh, for the bonds, right? The 30-year, the 10-year, the five-year note, and the two-year note. 
All right, at the end of this session, we will announce prices every day. We will award two traders with access to the trading room for one full month, okay? Uh, so this is it for uh, more details on that when, uh, when we're getting closer towards the end of the session, so after 11.30 or so, okay? All right, so I am going to start sharing uh, what we need to share right now, and that is our screen. So let me just pop that up. And please give me a heads up. Let me know if you guys can see it. Just a quick one would do in the trading room. And I'm going to walk you through um, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Love you guys. You guys are so energetic this morning. Okay, so first of all, let's start with kind of like like an overall look and see what is going on, you know, percentage wise. So we are having the Dow that is slightly up, barely, you know, barely, but a little bit up. We have two points up in S and P. We have Nasdaq, which is up just a little bit, eighteen points, and we have three points up in Russell. So basically, we're unchanged from uh, from the open from when we opened last night at six o'clock. So basically, we're flat. So what does that mean? We're not bullish. We're not bearish. However, for the trading session, because we have been trading into a massive uptrend, we have to consider the bullish bias. So at this point, right going into the open, uh, we need to be bullish biased because the overall trend is higher. So we're having the daily, the weekly, the uh, four hour, the one hour trend that is higher. Yesterday, we saw a little bit of a sideways um, uh, price action into the market. Yesterday, we only had two trades. Uh, we had one in NASDAQ and one into the Dow. Uh, both ended up well, by making money. It was more of a scalping opportunity. We went in and out and it was quick. And we were done, I think, at, at 1030. I mean, I we were really done really fast yesterday. And we called it a day. We shut down the room. I mean, why stick around, right? when you have a lot of nonsense. So again, yesterday we had a range, we had support, we had resistance. Uh, today we had a we have a moderate, and by the way, you are going to see some notations on my charts. And you, I don't use a lot of indicators. First of all, I just use, you know, very few move, moving averages. I use the 20 simple moving average. I use the 10 exponential moving average, 50 simple, 200 simple. And that's pretty much it for my trading decisions. Um, I don't use sophisticated indicators, but I do use my proprietary institutional um, institutional levels based on which you have these triggers that are happening and you're going to see them follow through into targets. We do have a moderate bullish above. So this means that when the price crosses above this level and we teach these in our classes on how to trace them, there is not an automated system that can trace this uh, that can trace this for you. So you have to uh, do it every day, which is literally less than maybe five minutes every single day. But it is with extreme accuracy. So if you see these levels right now, you can take a snapshot. Of, of course, you can receive the recording and you will see how these levels are going to play out into the end of the day. All right. Well, when the price in the Dow is trading above the moderate bullish above level, we can expect the price to continue higher. You can see that it already made a low in the overnight trading session and already has a minor support band all the way to 34,900. What this means is that because we have an overnight low into the 924, we also have another low into the 24, uh, into the 34,900. So it means that it's a whole band of support. So the price is not going to stall into the 924, it's going to bounce around into that area. So um, if the price should start pulling back into this area, keep in mind that this could be like a trampoline area from which the price can rotate and go back up. Uh, so we need to take this into consideration. Minor support areas are very important for price action. They can only be found in ongoing trends. So that means that they're supporting a, a, a pull, pull, they're supporting buys off of these pullbacks. All right. So when you're wanting to buy the dip, right, this is how you buy the dip. You base your decisions on these maximum support levels. Uh, confluence levels, if you will, that are more prone to rotating into those areas. So as long as the price is going to stay above 35,000, we will look for a bullish opportunity. 
Obviously, these are one hour charts that you guys see here. We're going to drill down to smaller time frames. I watch absolutely all the time frames from one minute all the way to quarterly charts and even annual charts sometimes. Uh, and uh, also, we're going to dive into smaller time frames here as well um, as soon as we're getting closer to the open. But we're going to do the analysis so we could have a macro look into before we dive into the uh, micro look. All right. So uh, if we manage to get over 35,020 area, we will have room to progress higher. It's not going to be that easy because the, uh, the price is really grindy. But if it gets velocity, it may go into the 35,050. The next target is going to be into the 90, 100. And you could see it right here. 35,137, which is also the old time high. Now, for the MNE SP range bound, we have highs, we have lows, almost equal highs, equal lows. Uh, we also have a moderate bullish above level. So, this is great for price because as long as it's staying above this purple line, it means that we'll have a chance to continue higher. Again, same chop to the left hand side that we had from the end of the session uh, yesterday, New York trading session. We do have resistance into the 31 to 32. 33 is 33.25 is the all time high. However, if the price is going to snap above the 44.33.25, it will start going higher. And we do have targets all the way into the 44, 40, there, 40 area and even 45 area for the day. Like I said, it's all contingent on that 11 o'clock views. And then we have NASDAQ. NASDAQ is a little stronger. You can see that the overnight trading session took the price lower. However, it didn't dip as much. Take a look here. So compared to the Dow, Dow dipped a little lower than yesterday's low, right? You see the S&P that dipped a little bit lower, it all, not really challenging yesterday's low from the overnight, but still a little bit lower. And then here you have an elevated low, right? So this is the strongest pattern. Plus you have a lot of price condensation right into the high, right into the 150. This is a pressure zone. If the price is going to start trading above the 150, I have here a notation that you're going to see it so much better when we dive into smaller time frames. It says here, stay long. Okay. So any trigger that is going to happen over 150, we're going to stay long. We're going to have target into the 157. Then we have target into the 170 and so on. And that 172.5 is the all time high and also represents a weekly rotation. All right, let's uh, dive into the one hour in Russell. Oops, where's Russell here? Hold on, let me just see where my levels are in RTY. They got, okay, let me see. No, it's not on the default. Hmm. Oh, that's odd. The levels just disappeared. Okay, so I'm going to tell you uh, what I'm seeing on the technical chart. So we're going to try to uh, do them as I'm speaking right now. Okay, let me just. Um... Okay, so this is going to be right here. This is going to be bullish above. All right, so we're going to go bullish above here uh, into the 45. We have massive support. Okay, uh, we have massive support into this level uh, of uh, 22, 2220. Oops, oh, here it is on the daily. All right, all right. All right, so basically this is what we're uh, trading right here. And also to zoom in on the technical image, Okay, yeah, we are trading into a bullish above area. Okay, let's see, this is the bullish above area right here. So we have already triggered above. You can see how easy it is to determine these levels um, and to trace them. So it's not taking that long. So we have a little bit of a tradable void right here, which is good. And then we have an ultimate level that I was looking at, see, because I already did the work here. And this is the level right here. And this is going to be resistance. And this is going to be bullish above as well. Plus bullish above. All right. This is going to have a double roll right here. OK, here we go. All right. So if the price is going to snap above uh, this 45 to 50 area, 50 areas better. Um, then we will have room for 58. Then we have room for 60, 63. This is this 63.8 is going to be the blast off. Rocket emojis. 
Okay. <laughs> yes, it has been flat all year, but definitely super tradable on the day trading perspective. Um, all right, let's move on to oil. I don't know what, uh, where my tracing uh, went. Okay, here's oil. Here's the default. Okay, let me go back here. All right. All right, so here's oil. We do have a double bottom onto the daily. Yesterday, we rotated off of this double bottom. We have a decision point right here into the $68. If we break 68, we're going to be bearish. If the price is going to get rejected below 67, we're going to be re remaining moderate, moderate neutral. So we're going to be neutral to moderate bearish. And if we close below 67, we're going to start looking uh, looking bearish, especially under 66.50. So under 66.50, that's when the bearish uh, aspect is going to start kicking in. Gold is a little bit more problematic here because uh, gold is tapping into, you can see we have a moderate, moderate, moderate bearish blow. We have resistance into the 1739 to 1740 area from which the price got rejected and we're moving back lower. And in terms of targets, we have room all the way into the 1700. Guys, we're open. So what that means is that we're gonna dive into smaller timeframes. I'm just gonna put them on the five minute. And the reason for that is because the price is a little bit volatile and because we want to make sure that everybody can get into the trade. Uh, scalping is going to be a little bit more difficult uh, on this side. Okay, nice snap over the RTY. All right, so remember, just the, because the price is moving doesn't mean that we're going to get into a trade, even though we do have our levels here, but we're waiting for a pattern. If we have a pattern, we have a trade, no pattern, no trades. And like I said, I'm super selective. The first uh, reversal time in the market is coming in at 9.35. So it's about four minutes from now. And typically, if you have the price that is coming in, you can expect for the price to rotate around 9.35. And then we have the next rotation that is happening in the market uh, as part of the market rhythm at 9.45. So you can see some very divergent action. We're having the doubt that's just open. And this is a result from the... Um, range that has been developed since yesterday's trading session. So we're still trading into that very, very choppy range. We're going to be bullish above that range. And uh, we're going to be neutral as long as the price is going to remain within the range, neutral towards bullish because we are into that stage three, right? Stage one is that tentativeness stage where we are waiting for a trade. Stage two is uh, is the uh, is the uh, is actually flowing with the trend. So therefore is going higher. And then when the price is trading into a range, levitating above uh, within a trend, then that is a stage three. So from a stage three, there are two things that can happen. Uh, in that range bound action, remember an object in motion tends to remain in motion. So there are higher odds, 80 to 90% odds for the trend to continue higher. But of course, on negative impact, caused by news or any kind of release that is coming out, uh, the price is going to start coming back uh, back in into a stage four. And whether you know, you're know you having that stage four, which is could be a little steeper or could be a little shallow, we can look for the next decision. All right, you can see that we have a lot of volatility. Uh, 980 is the new support in YM. We have 35050 here, so really wide. This is just, and it's not even completed. This is just the first two minutes into the market, and the market is haywire right now. Take a look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ coming in as well. Uh, we're getting a lot of support and a lot of love here in Russell. Russell current support is into the 30s, 2230. Decision point with the bullish above is over 35. We tested that area. We went a little bit higher. Uh, I'm looking at my uh, active trader, and I have to tell you that it is haywire. It's just moving back and forth super, super, super fast, um, and it's skipping beats. So that means that if you try to take a trade at the market, you're most likely going to get uh, slipped. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that I do all my trades are limit orders. So I know ahead of time when I want to get into a trade uh, and I know my parameters. Like I said, I know my parameters ahead of time. Uh, I'm just looking at why I'm right now. So let's say so right now the price is at 29. Let's see how if it's skipping beats. No, 30. 
33. So see, it moves from, okay, so we went to 36 now, 33, 34 now, 24 now. Definitely not a trading environment right now, okay? Not a trading environment. Hey, Rosemary, I can answer right now because we're not in a trade. So um, the moving averages that I'm using are the 20, and I'm going to type them in here. Uh, these are simple moving averages, and I have uh, the uh, 10 exponential moving average. Not a lot of moving averages, but more than enough to make my trading decisions. And if we have time today, I will... Um, uh, yeah, if we have time today, I will definitely uh, give you a little bit of insight um, on one of the moving averages and why I like it and why I like trading with it. But so right now at the quiet time, now we need to wait for the price to settle down. It is 935. This is the first chapter in the market. Uh, this is often, you know, uh, the call the amateur five minutes in the market, uh, not the amateur hour, that is into um, 1030. So uh, if you're very new to trading, uh, you know, it's best to wait at least 30 minutes before you actually get into a trade because this is a really fast paced, uh, fast paced market. All right, so uh, typically I, uh, I have favorites, <laughs> okay? So I tend to have favorite trades. Um, uh, right into the trading session, but today, not so much. Uh, I would say I'm attracted a little bit more to the Dow or the mini S&P today, um, these two, because they're trying to hold. Uh, you can see that they're trading above that purple area. I see a lot of volatility in NASDAQ. So if we're going to have a trade in NASDAQ, it's going to have a really wide stop. Okay, you can see support that is right now into the 15.125. Okay, and you can see that topping tail that almost reached the 155. All right, so why I'm in NASDAQ, why I'm in ES are right now holding a little bit better. I'm not showing here on the chart, but wheat is a little stronger, shows signs of strength and also soybeans. Corn is the trade that we're currently in. And uh, coffee is very interesting. I'm just gonna put here uh, J-O. Um, this is, um, uh, it's based onto the weekly, okay? This is a weekly rotation in uh, in coffee. Okay, so this is a weekly rotation. It actually already triggered here um, over 50, over 50, 20 to 50, 40. Um, it's a good buy. The risk for this trade is going to be minor support into the 47, 47.30 to 47.40. Expect the price into 55 and 58. Just a heads up on that. All right. So let's move back. Oil. I like to look at oil because um, if oil is stronger, then it's maintaining the S&P to the strong side. I have strong financials right now. I'm looking constantly. I have other three screens where I'm watching for uh, stocks and their reaction. Uh, so I could have a better gauge of which direction, which direction these indices are going to go into. And also wheat, I was mentioning earlier, um, and this is ZW. We're mostly focused um, on futures for day trading, but uh, this, uh, this is kind of like an interesting pattern onto the daily because it had a quadruple uh, tap into the tiny MA. And if the price today is going to get over 7.23.75, uh, actually 7.24, 7.24, this high right here. If it gets over 7.24, the price is going to start moving higher with the first target into the 7.30 and 7.38. All right. So as you can see right now, we do have a little bit more relative strength into the Dow and ES supported by a little bit of pressure into oil to the upside, which is good for us. 
Um, if the price should get over 68, we could see bullish above and oil over 68, uh, 67. You could see that it's trading in a range uh, 68 by 67. And uh, if you have been trading oil for a while, you probably have noticed that it loves to trade around the whole numbers. Uh, in gold, uh, I, I would not like to call this trade as a short. It looks like moderate bear, bearish below here. Uh, it could have a jerk reaction. We talked about it yesterday as well. It could do a jerk reaction to the downside and then can flip to the upside. So it's a little bit more uh, volatile. Uh, we have resistance into the 1740. If you think this is a trade for you, 1740 is uh, the stop and your entry is somewhere 22 to 23. It's trading right here where an entry would be. And it has room to go lower, like I said, 1710 to 1700. All right, a lot of divergence. This is, diver this is a divergent market. It's the most difficult market to trade. When you're having lower, for example, in NASDAQ, you're getting a ramp up into YM and you're getting a little bit of rotation here um, in S&P. So this is a nice inside bar. We had an inside bar here with a trigger. Still very choppy though, still very choppy. Like I said, I'm not really expecting a lot of activity uh, into 11 o'clock. Uh, do I trade currencies? Not really. I don't trade currencies. Um, I used to trade currencies and I focus more on indices. Okay. Wow. NVAX. NVAX is, I'm just hitting my alerts right now. This is a trade that we've done in the stock swing trader. All right, so see we got the inside and out here. Typically, I would call this as a long, but we're still not rotating yet. Check Russell here. Thirty-seven would be a trigger for. I put a quick alert here. Thirty-seven gets over thirty-seven, can run to thirty-nine. Wow, what a whipsaw! No, we're not going to do anything yet. Cancel this alert here. We can put it up here, and we can take a look since we don't have any active trades. All right. Let's do, uh, let's do here the euro, okay, euro down, let's take a quick look. Uh, if I trade currencies, Raphael, if I trade currencies, I typically, you know, um, want to swing trade, I do not day trade them. All right, so um, here's the thing with Euro. The Euro is back into support, massive support right here. Massive, massive support um, into the 168 to 170. Uh, from the daily, the daily st still still has a little bit, uh, still has a little support into the 11685. From um, the one hour, yeah, it's getting back into support. So we should see some kind of, um, I, I, it's not something that I would trade right away. Okay, so it's not something that I would trade right away. The trigger for this came actually yesterday and the trigger for the short was at 1.1762. And this is actually target, big target right here. Can it run lower? It actually has a triple bottom into the 165, 1.165 from the weekly. And it's it has a massive uh, resistance, um, I'm sorry, massive support knot. Yeah. It can be day tradable. It's just that I'm not day trading it. So I like to look at it more of a swing trading opportunity. All right, so we still have a lot of strength in ES. 
Looking at financials, XLF is higher. American Express is lower on um, JP Morgan, which is a Dow component, is sideways right now, trading within yesterday's range. <clears throat> City is a little bit perkier because it's approaching yesterday's high and is trading it into yesterday's high. Morgan Stanley, a uh, brand new high for the year and is trading over $100, 101.42, just made a new high. Um, Walmart is heading higher and with a brand new high on the week. Um, Boeing is still trading into yesterday's range. These are some of the big stocks that are under uh, the Dow index. Uh, Caterpillar getting some strength today opened above yesterday's high and also above the 20 SMA, which may gain some traction for the upside today. Pfizer with a brand new high. These are all Dow components. Bank of America is higher and uh, has not really traded above yesterday's high, but definitely strong. So let's keep an eye on the Dow and ES that are supported more by financials. Let's get back here into oil. I'm expecting like a chop show going into the um, eleven o'clock news. All right, we're just watching. Uh, big move down here in Russell. Let's take this to the five minute. And don't forget that even if you guys are seeing just, uh, just the five minute, I'm watching all time frames. See, the move up is not really sustained. So right now we were looking at a possible entry over 29.75 29, to 29.50 here. And it just ran just very little higher. Okay, on the other side, NASDAQ, see how they're trading. So in, uh, in one moment earlier today, um, we had the Dow higher and we have the S&P higher and we had weakness in NASDAQ and now NASDAQ back up. NASDAQ is just trying to balance out the uh, is trying to balance out uh, the um, the dip that it had done and is trying to establish the range for the trading session today. Uh, this is so we're trading between bullish above and a continuation to the bullish above. So definitely it's into bullish environment while Russell is pulling back. See the weakness in Russell. Um, is not accommodating for a lot of long. So right now we have a uh, relative weakness in Russell. We, we have Russell approaching support. Um, and we do have two strong indices. We have YMNES and we have NASDAQ that is fighting to get back over that 150. And uh, let's take a quick look at some of the NASDAQ stocks. Apple, very strong on the day. Apple, Google, strong. Amazon, guys, watch that base in Amazon since it reported earnings last week. Um, it, is, it has been trading sideways, careful, because it's still trading into a massive bull flag formation from a higher time frame from the weekly charts and the... Um, monthly chart. So it's still very bullish over that range. It's going to start flying. Uh, also, I'm seeing the VIX, VIX, fear factor VIX that have just made a new low. Um, and Apple moving higher and making, Apple's making me happy because I'm an Apple uh, on a swing trade. Okay. So I haven't mentioned other commodities, but I will mention them now as I'm watching. So my eyes are right here on this screen. And I'm also watching a corner of my eye, another screen where I'm seeing that $4 is the line in the sand for natural gas. Natural gas is holding the $4 area uh, very nicely. We're having copper that has done a pullback and I'm seeing it bullish over $4.40. So that's something that I'm watching as well. 
And I'm seeing grains that are still holding very strong. I think that grains are going to start moving towards fall. So um, let's keep an eye on those. They may start uh, moving a little bit ahead of uh, ahead of fall as well, based on the chart pattern, based on the technicals that we have. All right, a lot of whipsaw action right now in the market. You can see that not smooth continuation. We're getting like up and down, up and down. So it's definitely, we don't wanna have a cardio when we're in a trade. Uh, hey, Peter, which market would be considered the leader and the follower? So right now the leaders are going to be the ones that are uh, pointing higher. In my personal opinion, I think that NASDAQ, because it had a shallower, pull back in the overnight trading session. So definitely a leader right now. Uh, percentage wise leading as well, 0 0.13, not, I mean, it's still into the break even zone, right? So it's not really extremely, but it's a little bit more bullish than anything else, but it's not setting with any kind of pattern for now. All right, just, just a web saw. But, um, and all of three, all these three, YMES and NASDAQ, they're into the leading category right now. The only divergent index is, Russell, that is not participating. And the problem is that when you have a divergent index, for example, like Russell, Russell pointing lower, take a look at it. It may impact these indices that are leading and they're going to go like, oops, wait a minute. I mean, like maybe we're going the wrong way and they're going to start following Russell ultimately. So when we're getting a little divergence, when one index is uh, pointing lower, uh, then the rest of the indices are going to say, hey, we're going to halt. You know, we're going to stay here. Uh, and we're going to see what's going on and they may rotate lower. So they may start following Russell. This is, this is what a divergent market does. You really don't know who's going to follow who. So is NASDAQ going to start following Russell or is Russell going to wake up, rotate and go back up? All right. So NASDAQ. Going a little, uh, see the 15 minute is already set. The 15 minute and NASDAQ is ready to trigger higher over 54, but the stop for this is gonna be 110. So it's gonna be super, super wide. We're also approaching super fast the top of the hour. We have less than nine minutes into the top of the hour, but NASDAQ has already triggered a daily rotation. So this, this is major for a continuation higher. So it may continue today, even into the old time high into the 172. But you can see that once it pops up and then it goes like, oh, pulls back, right? So it inhales, it wants to go higher and then oh, it exhales, right? So it's not really ready. This is Algoland. This is a true presentation of how the algorithms that are trading. This is only algorithms trading right now. There's not one and perhaps some retail traders that are probably losing money at this point. Uh, but uh, we have one more hour into that news, and I'm still hoping that we could get a uh, we could get a trade in before eleven o'clock, and then we can discuss uh, the reaction post um, the infrastructure bill decision. All right, but anyways, just keep in mind we have a 15 minute high low here that is going to be very important, right? If the price is going to trade above this high, it's going to go to 58.5. This is going to this is going to be the first resistance. Uh, so this is going to be the first target, the entry 54, the target 58. And then if it escapes over 59, so it needs 59, 59 to 60, then it has a tradable void into the 170. So it has about um, from 60 to 70, it has another 10 points. The only problem that I'm seeing here is that we don't have a really good support level because you could see the support that we have established from the open range so far in the first, let's say, first 30 minutes into 10 o'clock. We have it into the 116. Uh, we have a little shallow support into the 140. So this is actually what I'm looking at right now to see if that support level is going to hold. If that support level is going to hold, that's going to be our stop. Okay. So we're going to look at that 140 for a possible stop. Just a heads up on that. So we're going to go back to the five so you guys can see what I'm watching. Also, we have a doji. Right here, this could be like real big doji alert if the price is going to trade over 40, 43, actually. If it trades over 43, it's going to go to 50 and 60. Let's see here. 
I'm actually stocking right now this NASDAQ, but NASDAQ pulling back. See, they're not in sync. And when the indices are not in sync, it's going to be really hard to, um, to commit to a trade. And we're getting a one hour rotation in oil. Oil needs to get over 68. It's going to be 68 by 67 if we have a trade in oil. 30 minute, see the 30 minute, the problem is that that's why it needs the 68 because we have a declining 200 SMA. Okay, guys, I don't think we're going to get any trades in uh, ahead of 11 o'clock. I don't know. We'll see. Just stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Okay, because you don't know when a trade is going to line up. But um, look at these topping tails and the prices. See, this is a five minute high low here and violating the low, rooting into this. It's really trying to stabilize into this 40. Remember, this was my focal area into the 40. Uh, this went uh, above the doji price, uh, going a little bit higher. You can see that it's going higher and that it's pulling back. It's just really not in sync, very chaotic. Some days you have to wait a little longer for trades. Hey, Kevin, totally. No, no, I'm not forcing. I'm not, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not donating. <laughs> In the old days, you call this ugly? Totally. Super ugly. Denise, the rotation is a buy setup or a sell setup. Um, natural gas, Laura, you're a natural gas. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice action. Off of the 10 EMA, bouncing. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. This one is a miss always. All right. Tell me about it. All right. See, YM did exactly what we said. I really didn't like the risk to it because, like I said, the entry would have been over 43, uh, 43, 44. Uh, the stop would have been the even number and the target was really like not even maybe half an hour into it. So I didn't have a lot of room to run into the target. Okay, I'm still watching that stack. NASDAQ two minute rotation here. Um, Could be like 47. Nah, never mind. It triggered already. So you have these spikes that are super fast here. Hey, Joe, good job. All right. So I'm still looking uh, right now. So that, one for, that 140 support level was tested. We're going to have stop probably in that stock into the 130. Uh, 133. It's in the core of that range, not loving that stop into the 135. You, you may get a, uh, you may get a whip down. Oil, guys. Oil is going to be a little bit of a longer term trade. Um, Let's see, see it poked into that 68. The trigger is actually 68.10 by under 67.
Okay, see if it comes back to 6810. Uh, CL 6810 is the entry 67 for the stop. We're going to go for targets. Uh, 68.50 and 68.60. And we're going to be deciding from that point on. Indices are just too whippy. Copper is getting ready for, let's put copper here. Copper is really starting to wake up here. I'm not loving the knot here. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Top of the hour, guys. 10 o'clock reversal time. 10 o'clock reversal time. So I like this formation with the buy. Mm, no, I'm going to wait on copper. Okay. Ultimate target is going to be 69 for oil. Okay. And... Wow, indices were like up and down and up and down. It's like not moving in a really um, orderly fashion for what I would like to, to see a trade. And Russell, Russell is coming back down. Let's see. And don't forget it's 10 o'clock reversal time. See, uh, NASDAQ escaped into the void. That's good, let, let them escape, let them clear the way because oftentimes when you're getting a really shaky kind of uh, open, uh, they're testing and they're trying to determine their ranges. So far we have the 30 minute range, which is huge, which is huge, but we have a lot of information. So we know that the price went higher in the first 30 minutes. And we have set already 10 o'clock lows. What that means is that typically if you're setting 10 o'clock lows, they're holding the 10 o'clock lo lows for the New York trading session. So this is pretty cool because we know that it reinforces our long directional bias. Russell is, so far is out of the question for a trade. So we're going to skip this one. Uh, we're going to try to see if we get a pullback in YM back into the 40s or 35s. Uh, like I said, I'm not in any trades and in indices. Okay. And by the way, uh, the CL trade, you guys know you can trade micro oil as well. I don't need to tell you guys know what vehicles are available. So target one is that uh, target one is at 6850 at 6850. Here it is 6850 scale out half. If you have multiple contracts, there's no reason why. So if you're trading with micros even you can take out half at target one leave the other half in for further targets and run out raise the stop in oil to break even okay okay smp trading with tons of topping tails uh, we are trading right now into reversal time. So, uh, Dan, that means that right now in oil, you're putting your, uh, if your entry was 68.10, I have a few messages here that some of you guys got 12, some of you guys got 15. Then you put it at your break even, whether it's 10 or 15 or whatever it is, if you jumped in at 20, okay, you put your stop at 20. So whatever your break even is. 
Okay, whatever your break even is, that's it. Yeah, MYM is uh, the next target. If you're in, Joe, if you're in, your target is 80 and 90. I'm not in. I'm not in any indices. Not in. See, this was the nice decision point here, but it was so when we were establishing a, a trigger in the five minute NYM, we had this happen. So look at the time you had 950. We're trying to poke higher in YM. And at 950 exactly, you had the punch higher and then you had a violent reaction to the downside in NASDAQ. Take a look how divergent NASDAQ is right now. Okay. So NASDAQ super divergent, super divergent. Okay, so the next uh, uh, target was hit. So target two was hit right now at 60. You cannot raise the stop other than the break even point in oil. You have to keep the stop. Typically, you know, I like to raise the stop a little bit, but there's no way we can do that because the targets are so close together, 50 and 60. All right. Now, depending on how we are going to pull back right now into the market, if we get a shallow pullback, for example, in the Dow, this is going to be the prime time uh, for another setup to form, uh, typically between 10 o'clock and around 1030. 1030 is our prime time trigger time. That is awesome, Joe. This is fantastic. Okay, so let me give you an idea of what I'm expecting right now from the market. If we are going to get a pullback from this point, this is gonna be the first area that I'm expecting the pullback to happen. This is a nice minor support and is also anchored into a 10 EMA. And from this point, we will look for a rotational pattern that may take the price back into the 90s and 100 possibly a little bit of divergence here and continue higher. This is what I'm expecting into the uh, into the uh, YM trade. And also we have a five minute rotation happening here, five minute sell happening in ES. This topping tail suggestive that the price may start pulling back. We also have a minor support into the 30, uh, I would say into the 30, just upper 30. Uh, area right here, um, 30.25, 30.50. And from this point on, we can continue higher, a little bit of divergence here, and then continuing higher into the 36. You see the dotted line, this is resistance. Uh, now, as you can see here, we have a brand new high into the m &E SMP. brand new high. So we have a new all-time high in ES. All right, so what I'm expecting in NASDAQ, NASDAQ is way different. Like I said, we have a continuation for a bullish above. We are going to start, um, you know, th this is a more massive range, if you will. So we do have this, this is the story with uh, NASDAQ. This is the 10 a.m. low that we are having here. So the 10 a.m. low, as long as the 10 a.m. low is going to hold, we are going to move higher. If we are going to get this candle, for example, wherever it's gonna uh, wherever it's gonna form but if we get the price to peak above this 140 140 is that line in the sand we may get the price higher then we get may get a shallow pullback again and then it could go back into the 58 to 60 and then it can poke higher um this is the pre-planning for uh for this trade obviously there's of course the continuation pattern that we have to also take into consideration and that they could go vertical from this point. So they could go, they can continue the momentum, all right? They can continue the momentum. There's no momentum in NASDAQ, but there's a very strong momentum, ongoing momentum in YM and also into the m and &P. No momentum in RTY. And in fact, RTY, I'm gonna zoom in it in right here into the 15 minute to cut some of that noise. All right, so you can see we have, not, not bad. We also have a 200 SMA here, which on the 15 minute is a big deal. But we may get if the price is going to trade over, um, if the price is going to trade over uh, 34, it's going to go into 35. Okay. <laughs> and the stop needs to be under, uh, under 23. And then if it trades over 30, so it's going to go higher. Come on, oil. Oil has 20 points into 69. 
Let's see if I can readjust my stop. No, I can't as of right now. Um, there is a bit of resistance here into the 80s from your trading session charts, and it may start rotating a little bit lower. And we have targets into 69 and 6910 is going to be uh, in oil 6910. We have another target in 6910 contingent at breaking uh, 69 for so from this point on we are in full trail mode with the last lot going into targets. Other targets. Uh, and it also has room to 6940 if it goes parabolic on us. All right, so no trade in indices, but this is the only thing that I have going on right now, the oil trade. Okay, everybody, um, right now, so an oil trail stop, um, it's, we're gonna we're gonna start chunking it out sixty eight fifty for the uh, for the rest of the position. Or if you're in with only one contract, you could just uh, trail that sixty eight fifty until we hit the next target. When we hit the next target, we're gonna go. We're gonna lift a stop a little bit higher. Hey Paul, yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in uh, YM. <laughs> it was my favorite today. YM and ES were my favorite, but I didn't. I really didn't have really good entries. I, it's also called, I chickened out. <laughs> no, it was too confusing this morning. It was too confusing. If anyone is in any trades, let me know. I can help you out, trail. Uh, for example, we're getting a little bit of topping tails into oil on the two minute. I have the trail at 68.50 right now, 68.50, bottom line. That is what, that, that is my exit. That is my exit zone. Oh my gosh, this YM. See YM and ES, runners. Hey, William, how are you? Awesome. Uh, for those of you guys that are in MYM or uh, YM, okay? I don't know where you guys got in, but I could give you a trail stop for it to lock in some of those profits, okay? To lock in some of the profits. And right now I'm going to zoom in on the five minute here. Okay, to see the bigger picture. So uh, you don't want it below 50 because if oil is gonna go below 50, it's gonna fill the um, fill the area towards 68. And oil may be setting up for another entry as well. Uh, Sean, it was an hourly buy. Okay, so the trail would be 100 in YM, in YM. So the trade was based on a one hour. You see the pullback into the 20 SMA, also minor support. This is also an inverse head and shoulder. So there were a lot of things that went into this setup. I am bummed for YM. <laughs> yes, so bummed. <laughs> okay, so let me show you what I'm uh, what I'm looking at. <laughs> YouTube, Paul. I'm pretty sure everybody else. Okay, so um, don't worry, other opportunities are going to come along. All right, so this was a head and shoulder pattern. First of all, here, this is the neckline, right? Uh, so this is also resistance, prior resistance from this top and from this top. Okay, and uh, we have uh, the right shoulder. Okay, this is the head. And this is the left shoulder. This is a very powerful um, rotational pattern uh, that can shift the directional bias. 
for the trade, for the price action. And once you see here the overnight trading session, so this would have been a buy point, but this is a buy point for overnight traders. Obviously, those of us that are on the East Coast or even West Coast here in the US, we were probably, we were probably sleeping at this time, right? Because this happened into the Asian session and London session. Uh, this is target one for them, right? So they took their money. So you can see what happened. The psychology is that they took their money. And by the way, the 50 is holding. Okay, wow, YM is going ballistic here. So um, you can see that they took their profits and ahead of the New York trading session, uh, the price pulled back, right? This is profit taking. And then you see this one, two, three down back into this prior resistance. This prior resistance now forms minor support. So from this point on, this becomes a stocking uh, zone for a rotation. Okay, stocking zone for a rotation. So what that means is that you want to buy it, but on a confirmation, on a pattern. You cannot just buy it just because it's on support, right? If you buy, if you buy something just because it's on support, you will lose eighty percent of the time. So um, because this this is the trigger candle right here. Wow, this is going ballistic. Okay, go. Oil. This is the only thing that I'm in, and I'm keeping an eye on it on smaller time frames to see how we can trail. It's going to go to 69. This is the only trade that can work for us right now. All right, so uh, you can see this doji, doji up, going up, up, up right here. So this is the trigger point. Once it trades over the over this prior high, it could be considered as an entry. However, we decided to uh, take the entry a little bit higher with confirmation, and that is because this was a pressure point, right? You can see that we have multiple lines. This is a decision point because from this point on, the price could have continued lower. If it would have gotten rejected, the price would have went back down. So what I mean by that is that the price goes up, the price goes down because this is a decision point and it already reacted. So then a second time, if we would have got it at the whole number, there was there were no guarantees that the price would have ignited higher. So therefore it could have went back lower, right? Because it would have been rejected by this prior high. Okay. <laughs> oh, Steve, there's a lot of trades that I miss. You can't, you can't have them all, okay? You can't have them all. Hey, Lori. <laughs> okay. Um, raise the stop. Guys, raise the stop in oil. Let's see here. Uh, raise the stop in oil to 68, uh, to 6860, 6860, CL trail stop. It's not that, and Steve, it's not that I missed it. It's not that I missed it. Uh, it's the fact that I didn't want to commit to it because like I said, at 950, why am was going higher? And then you had a divergency, huge divergency at 950 in NASDAQ that was pointing lower. Okay. And you also had at 950, let me just go back here on the five minutes. So I trade with correlation. And at 950, just before 950, where we're getting a little bit of pop in Russell, that, that was it. Okay. That was it. So trail stop, guys, don't forget 60. 60 is the bottom line. We're going to chunk out 60. 60 and out. That's my exit right there into the 60s, and I'm out. No, Tom, it's not that. You know, you have to watch them because you have to watch synchronicity and divergency. And we have divergency. When you're trading, for example, indices, you have to have on top all the indices. 
Okay, you have to have all the indices. You can't trade one without knowing what the rest of the market is doing. You have to have the whole entire market on your screen. And if you're seeing a setup that is developing in YM, which it was setting up because I did talk about this doji, okay, right here. And I did mention that if it trades over 43 to 44, it's going to go to 60 and probably higher. And we did have the targets above all of these horizontal lines. They represent targets. But like I said before, my decision was based on the fact that I'm not going to commit to the long side here because I have heavy divergence in NASDAQ. And oftentimes they go, uh, one of the indices is literally pulling the other. Okay. So what we have in the market right now, so, uh, um, you know, that saying is doesn't apply to futures indices. Okay. So when you're trading indices, you have to know what the whole entire market is doing. When you're having the whole entire market participate with you in the move, it's so much easier to achieve targets and you're going target hit, target hit, target hit. Today was a perfect example for, uh, for chart divergency. We had massive pressure in NASDAQ. We had a lot of pressure in Russell and we had a uh, high pressure and also a little bit of high volume here into, uh, into YM. Okay, so why I'm had a little bit, and that's because, like I said, most of these, uh, most of these uh, Dow stocks that um, obviously there, and by the way, Boeing has triggered a rotation on the daily. This is massive. It still has a lot of resistance above, uh, but it is pointing higher. You have Walmart, you have UNH. These are big components. And by the way, Home Depot just triggered a daily rotation. So it's higher. So uh, for the swing, from the swing standpoint, over 331, it's bullish with the stop under the 20 SMA on the daily, ready to go, higher. You also have a buy setup that already triggered in Nike. You already have a new high in Costco, new all-time high. You have Morgan Stanley, you have JP Morgan, you have financials, you have City that are really pointing higher. You have Caterpillar, which is a big component that I mentioned earlier, okay? Uh, that are higher. So I, what I bring to the table, I bring the, uh, I bring the, uh, not only the macro look of uh, the market. Uh, so I do uh, all high time frame analysis, and I bring them down to the smallest, and they are traced with levels on the technical charts. And there are traders in the room that definitely don't even need to hear me on the mic. They just go by these levels, and they. Happy muted, they're, they're doing their own trading and they are, um, you know, they're playing music or whatever they want to play because they have the levels, they have the confidence. Um, but I'm looking at the stock market. So the stock market is going to give me uh, the, and especially the components under each index, the major components under each index, the heavyweight uh, stocks that are going to give me the heads up. So I know ahead of time what's going to start moving and what not. This is the reason why I keep on mentioning financials, oil, oil higher, financials higher, S&P is going to go higher. S&P is rich in financials, rich in energy stocks. And if energy stocks are moving higher, if financials are moving higher, then S&P is moving higher. YM is also, a, um, you know, only 30 stocks under the Dow, but you do have some heavy players. You also have financials. Uh, and if financials are strong, this, these are going to go ballistic. Pfizer, uh, healthcare stocks as well, part of uh, YM. So YM going higher. So it, YM has a, uh, and like I said, financials are incredibly, incredibly bullish. I'm an XLF, for example, in my swing program. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm monitoring everything here. So um, no, they're not FIBs. No. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated to explain how the levels are traced. You will have to go through the whole five-day course uh, to know how to trace the levels. So I teach them in my course. No, I don't. I don't do that, Steve. No, I never chase. When you're chasing, uh, when you're chasing a trade, you're actually uh, elevating your risk. So there's no need for that. And when the price action is getting super fast or it's very choppy, I don't, what I typically do, I stand back and I'll go like, you know what, let's decide. I'm not throwing my money in the market. 
So I'm not a liquidity provider. I don't want to provide the liquidity for the market. I go for, um, I go for, um, by the way, we're just about to get trailed out right here. It's trading at 61, 60. Okay, I am, okay, I'm out right now. So uh, CL trade closed. Okay, CL trade closed. All right, 50 cents. Oh, that, yeah, Tom, totally. Uh, Kevin, Doji, YM, 1030 trigger time. Yeah, 1030 trigger time may come as a reversal time because we really didn't have a 10 o'clock reversal time. We went, we just went up. We just went up. We have a Doji here, so I'm expecting a pullback if the price is gonna trade under 136 to 137. If not, if it's going to trade above and it's going to start printing 66 to 67, it's going to 80. Like super, super confident on that. Super confident. Uh, Russell may be top watch. Russell may be top watch. Um, 36.8. Russell may be, okay, here's another doji here. Wow. And it's so extended from the 10 MAC. This would be, and I'm going to give you the perfect example. So for example, here, if one is going to trade over 63, it's going to start extending towards 80. But if it's going to start and the stop for this, is going to be under 38 to 36. And if it's getting under 36, the price is going to start coming down. Okay. It's going to start coming down. And we didn't have a 10 o'clock reversal time. So we had a full straight from 9.45, remember 9.45? Remember what I told you guys at 9.35? 9.35 is the first reversal. The decision is 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.30, right? So they committed at 9.35, even as divergent as the market was, they committed into the 35 at 9.45 uh, to, uh, to the upside. Typically at 10 o'clock, this is the candle right here. We should have had a little bit of a pullback. We didn't, we went straight up. We may stay sideways into 11 o'clock. We may stay sideways into 11 o'clock. All right, so I'm gonna put this back onto a five minute here. If we're gonna get a pullback into 68.30, we may have another watch. Um, we may have another watch in oil. I'm not liking the looks of NASDAQ. Mm -mm. See, Russell is, um, getting interesting here. All right, so we finally have pullbacks. These pullbacks are gonna be good. The next uh, area that we're gonna be watching is going to be 35,100 in the Dow. If the Dow is gonna come back to 35,100, the next setup that is going to form here, we're gonna be long. Yes, I am. Yeah, I am watching stocks at all times. Those are going, uh, stocks are giving me the heads up of what I need to do in the futures market.
All right, so why am I stabilizing into the highs? NASDAQ is giving up. Uh, we have some uh, selling pressure coming into the uh, NASDAQ stocks right now. So NASDAQ stocks, not that healthy. Um, we still have Facebook, Google, Apple that are up. We have Tesla that is down. We have Home Depot that is up. Uh, and we have semiconductors that are down. We have NVIDIA, Broadcom, um, Micron, Intel, AMD that are down on the day, ADI. Um, these are down and we have, uh, for example, yeah, they're pulling back right now. I don't know if they're getting positioned for um, infrastructure bill at 11 o'clock. Another buy setup that is forming in oil on the five minute, but it is a little bit elevated from where I wanted to. I wanted this setup to happen into the 40s. We still we may still get it into the 40s. I like this inside candle, just poked a little bit above. I don't think it's going to go higher. All right, here we go. We're getting the pullbacks. We're getting the pullbacks. That's good. Now we just sit and wait. Yeah, Sammy time. Yeah, it may be, but it's a little bit into thin air right now. We, we need some kind of support under it. All right, uh, major decision. Uh, so NASDAQ is crossing below uh, major support decision area. So from this point on, we can become moderately bearish into NASDAQ. Moderate bearish into NASDAQ right now. See how, so we could go from one tendency to another within the same session in like an hour difference. So we have the first hour for the day and we are violating the 10 a.m. low, which means that we can be bearish. We have the 10 a.m. low and the price is trading well above the 10 a.m. low in the yes, well above in the Dow, and we're still holding in Russell. Still holding in Russell. All right, just gonna take a quick look at momentum. And the momentum is right now towards the bearish side, bearish side favoring massive momentum. Wow, wow, massive momentum towards the downside accelerating right now. NASDAQ stocks are the first ones that are massively moving lower. We still have some stocks that are moving higher, mostly they're, See, very few stocks moving higher. Foot Locker moving higher. Uh, Verizon, SO. Wow, there's a strong momentum to uh, guys. Just time to sit back. Time to sit back. All right, we are back into the 100. Huge bottoming tails right now in um, SMP. Look at the volatility. That's about three points. It's a big deal on the five minute.
All right. Hey, Bruce. It popped up on the Benzinga scanner. All right, let's check it out. Not doing anything. And the reason for it is that the momentum is still uh, has not completed. It is only 1035. We're still into the prime time, trigger time, action area. Uh, what I'm seeing in the market right now is I think that they traders uh, pretty much, you know, kind of want to exit it the field um ahead of the announcement at 11 o'clock uh it's gonna be tough into 11 o'clock if we have a, a trade set up so okay so we have about less than 10 minutes for this candle to complete here so this could be like, uh, not now, but at 1045, if we get a trigger over this high, so not now into 1045. So we still have time until then. Time is of the essence here. Um, 2236.3 would be the trigger. Why I'm still strong. CYM can be a trade over. It has a two minute rotation. Thirty five one fifty six. Thirty five fifty. Thirty five one fifty six. So one fifty six for the entry. The stop is still one hundred. See, remember when we said that we need to see it to pull back into the one hundred. There it is. Inside candle in ES developing. Wow, we're getting super close to um, Uh, Tom, because I'm trading with the institutional flow. So the institutions were positioned uh, heavy in the Dow and were not positioned in NASDAQ. We have six minutes into the next uh, decision. So far, we have a trade that we're looking at, and this is why I'm long 156 by 100, entry 156, stop 100. We're going to look for our first target at 180, the rest of the targets to be decided. We may have a tighter entry in just about one minute. Less than one minute, three seconds, and we may get the entry. Nope. 
not doing this. It looks like a sandwich is the strongest thing out there, but NASDAQ not participating. Let's just keep the entry 156 for now. It can potentially have an entry at 143, but I'm not gonna do the 143. I'm gonna keep the 156. Let's zoom out a little bit in this oil. We want to cut some of the noise. If oil is going to trade under 49, it's going to start pulling back. See, this setup here is so juicy, but we're having red action, red momentum, and red continuation here. Wow, cancel why I'm long. They're dumping NASDAQ big time. Uh, we do have a bearish below level here. So when it is bearish below, we don't, don't just enter here. We need to see a close here. And then the next sell setup that is happening, then we take it short. This is, wow, this is such a divergent, messy, messy, messy market. Yeah, most of the... NASDAQ stocks are lower right now. Go so cancel YM trade for now. And just wait for the next setup to develop. All right, so we have Myrna. That is leading the downside with Amazon, ISRG, LRCX, DXCM, Google, Clack, Tesla down, LGN, Regeneron, Broadcom, PayPal. These are some of the leaders to the downside. Adobe, Netflix, AMAT, Micron, TXM, NVIDIA, Autodesk, they're lower. Uh, hey, Joe. Uh, yes and no, yes and no, because it depends on this 15,000 here and how, it, how it's reacting. It already went up today, but you don't have any kind of confirmation for long-term. You mean for a day trading perspective or swing, Joe? For day trade, it's long gone for the day trade. For the day trade, The entry was $8.10, and $8.10, and, and it's long gone right now. So right now it's trading close to a pullback area. It's into the one hour 200 SMA pullback is expected here. So that means that NASDAQ may be rotating a little bit for a pop-up. All right, let's get back here. Maybe short squeeze time. I don't know. We'll see. We love these drama bars. I don't like these big drama bars. Woo, yikes. Wow, this is a huge bar right here. Now we wait. I think everybody's dumping because of the 11 o'clock. Nobody knows what's going to happen at 11 o'clock and they just trigger some cells here. The one minute NASDAQ is super interesting right now. See how it's trying to hold this area? I don't know if it's going to hold it or not, but I think there's a decision that it's going to be made pretty soon. Two minute is setting up for what's going on here with my charts. Uh, <clears throat> bullish over 30, stop 15. Entry 30, stop 15. Entry 30, stop 15, NASDAQ, NASDAQ.
30 by 15. First target is gonna be this resistance area if we're gonna get there. So that's gonna be 37. Get ready guys, it's gonna happen fast. Trigger, we're in. This is a super scalp guys, super scalp, super scalp, 37 target. If it gets over 38, stay in, stay in, stay in. It needs to get over 43. If it gets over 43, we're going to run to 50. 45, 45, 45. 45 next target. 45 next target. Then we have 50. In 30 seconds, we move the stop. Twenty seconds to go. Stay with me. Get ready to move the stop. Move the stop to thirty eight. Move the stop to thirty eight. Move the stop to thirty eight. Let's go for a next target into 54, 54 next target, 54, 54 next target. We're gonna get ready to move the stop, move the stop to 40, trail stop 40, trail stop 40. We need to see the price over 50. If we get a print of 50, we're moving to 54, to 55, 54, 55. In 20 seconds, we lift the stop. In 20 seconds, we will lift the stop. Three seconds, one, lift the stop to 45. Lift the stop to 45. Trail stop, 45. Trail stop, 45. Heavy divergence right here into the 52. If we get a print of 53, we're moving to 60. Keep the trail, keep the trail, 45. Keep the trail, 45. We're two ticks away. And done. Closed. Closed at 45. All right, sweet. All right, it was a one hour trade, but it was pretty good. It was a counter trade. Yeah, it, it was textbook. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Awesome. All right, we're done. All right, let's see if we have another opportunity. We have another opportunity. I don't like the risk here because it's really elevated, but this has a chance to go higher. And by the way, this was a, two, a one and a two minute scalp. One and two minute scalp. One and two minute scalp. All right, this is decision zone. So I was hoping to get it a little bit higher. And in fact, the one minute is still thinking about it, but I'm not taking chances, all right? I didn't want to give back. So I wanted to chunk in 45 for one R. So it was more of a PNL type of thing. 
which don't do that. Okay. You should not be trading your PNL. I was trading my PNL right now. So I'm very honest with you guys. I was trading my PNL. Um, I saw one R. It's like, I'm going to lock this thing. All right. Um, and right now you could see the reaction off the 20 SMA. I think we're getting super close to 11 o'clock. Does anybody know? I don't have any TVs on. Um, uh, P Peter, I dialed in on one minute. This is the one minute. This is the one minute. This is the one minute. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh gosh. When is that infrastructure bill over with? Gonna, gonna tap here on the two minute to see if we have something uh, on the two minute. So sometimes you could get things that are happening on a smaller time frame. Sometimes you could get things that are happening on a larger time frame. So you just have to dial back and forth. And I'm going to share with you the screen from the screen on which I take decisions, but we're still watching. And by the way, YM is super strong, guys. YM is super strong. Okay, oil is going back out. The confidence that I had in NASDAQ for the long here for the short squeeze, and this was a scalp, it was against the trend. Okay, so we go with the trend, we go against the trend. Um, but um, this is super strong here. Wow, this is super strong. And in fact, the 15 minute looks beautiful. Remember that we we're still discussing that 156th century, right? Hey, Ramesh, is that infrastructure bill? Does it, and by the way, guys, I don't have any news outlets on when I trade because I don't want to be distracted. So give me a heads up if you don't mind when they're talk when they start talking about it. I think I'm going to keep you entertained until 11 o'clock and I'm going to share with you. Um, yeah, let me do this. I'm going to be sharing my screen, my decision screen. So you can see what's going on while we're, we still look at charts here. Okay, so this is my home screen where I take all of my trading decisions. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a done deal, but you know how the market loves to, loves to go like, oh, wow. I was like, what, did it pass? Wow, I really didn't know. You know, you know how the market reacts. Okay. All right. So this is my home screen. Okay. This is my home screen. This is where <laughs> yeah, it's the market. All right. So, um, okay. Let me just take these things out here. Okay. All right. So this is where I take all my decisions. Uh, by the way, these are my smaller time frames: one minute, two minute, uh, five minute and 15 minute. Um, and, uh, these time frames do not have pre-market data on them. So I keep them just in your trading session uh, times because uh, if there should be a, a gap in price, for example, I could treat it and trade it as a gap. Okay. Oh, thanks so much, Kevin. Okay. So, um, the, the, and as you can see here, this is where I do my uh, macro to micro analysis. So I start with highest high, higher time frames. Um, I always pay attention to what. And by the way, guys, even though I'm trading a one minute, for example, okay. So I always look at the monthly. I look at the weekly. I look at the structure and see where we're trading. The reason for the long was because we, <coughs> excuse me, because we had um, support uh, into the fifteen thousand right? 15,000 and 15,015 is where we uh, put our stop. So we have support there. We have a double bottom yesterday's low and today's low. And obviously if we break below 15,000, then we become bearish, but on a close below, at least on the one hour, not now. Okay. 
uh, right now, you we do not favor any kind of trades, and especially ahead of news or any. I, I don't trade news, guys. I really do not trade news. Okay, so um, what I'm what I was looking for is because we had a move, and by the way, remember that we triggered the daily setup. So when you're going to review this video, we were bullish to start the day because Nasdaq was the strongest index. Remember, we talked about in the pre market game plan that we have this low that is really elevated compared to the low that we had in yesterday's trading session. Yeah, that is a crazy bar. But at the same time, it's trading into support. And what else do we have here? We have a confluence area, and this is a uh, this is a two hundred simple moving average. So things can. Um, uh, this is a decision point. It could have been when we were in the trade, but it didn't last long enough, and that is because we do have the this pending decision that is at eleven o'clock. So in about four minutes, that's why I'm keeping you company right now. Um, because I'm not going to take a trade into uh, into right when they're releasing. You're going to see the price is going to go haywire. So it's going to be super crazy. Uh, what I'm also noticing is that when we first got the trade, it was the first try. Typically, when you're trying to buy bottoms and when you're trying to short squeeze and you're trying to uh, you know uh, do very aggressive momentum trades, you want to... Um, they have a really high degree of risk and they may stop out. But I saw my possibility there with a, a tighter stop compared to any setup that I have on my other uh, on my other time frames. So um, this is where I do my macro analysis. You can see here, like I said, we have a double bottom at 15,000. This is also a whole number. And uh, also we have the uh, 200 SMA here. We have the bearish below, which means that if this bar, you see this bar right here, if we close it below 15,000, uh, then we are going, and if any kind of setup here uh, that it's going to form, it's going to be a uh, high confidence to the, to the downside. So that means that it's increasing the chances of a follow through to the downside. Right now it's a 50-50 shot. Long or short from this point, 50 50 shot. So you have to be really good at nailing some really tight entries if you want to go in either direction. So either direction is possible. It still favors more upside, by the way, because you're having, and if this develops uh, into a bottoming tail, this could go into the end of the session back into the highs and can even make a new high. Okay. Uh, so this could have been a washout of the stops, washout of the stops right here. Okay, so what we're having, uh, for example, on the 15 minute, I typically like to do counter trend trades on the five and the 15 minute. Uh, but uh, I saw the opportunity of this consolidation and that's why I zoomed in on the technical chart and I showed it to you right here that we were doing this inside bar, doji bar, doji bar again. And the trade that we took was over these highs with confirmation over 30 because we wanted the price to prove that it can raise above those highs that were already set in the last three minutes. And we use this low for the stop. This is called an inside setup. And uh, the low here was 15. So this was our stop. And we went for our first target into the uh, 30 to 35. Uh, 30 to 35, we had our first target. And then uh, as, you know, as soon as we saw that the price is uh, going for um, a break over this 10 EMA, we looked for a target into the 54 to 55 area. And then we shortly rotate it lower. I don't typically like to do these rotations when we have massive support because this was a question here in the room. Uh, let me see. Uh, Marcel, you asked this question. Why didn't we do the short side? And that is because you have a double bottom. The pattern favored more upside than to the downside. So for example, here, you can see the five minute. The five minute is stabilizing. So the five minute is not following through to the downside. This is still a decision point. Like I said, if it trades below 15,000, then we become moderately bearish. But if it trades above again over this high, over this candle high, of, uh, what is that, 47 so if it trades over 47, it's going to try to squeeze back again into the 60. So it's going to have room from 47 to 50. It's about 10 points, not much. But again, the risk is going to be a little bit elevated because you have to put it into the 15,000. So see, see the problem that we're having here. So 47, uh, 47 for the entry. The stop is going to be 15,000. Lots of 
uh, points for the stop. So you can't take as much of a position, if you will. All right, here's a smaller doji. And again, look tight, tight, tight. We're getting tighter. Remember that the biggest decisions in the market are not coming from these big bars. These are not decision bars. Decision bars are little tiny bars that are developing in the pattern. Okay, those are those are the decision areas. So this is how I do my macro to micro look from top down trading analysis. There is uh, this is the time frame where I have like all my levels. You can see that I don't have any levels here because I want to have like really clean, clear charts. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, okay. So yeah, it's eleven o'clock, guys. It's eleven o'clock. All right. So other than that, this is, uh, you know, this is pretty much what I'm uh, watching right now. One of the things that I wanted to show you, and let me just share the other screen. Um, okay, where did it go? All right. All right. Let me just share this other screen with you guys. All right. Let's see here. Okay, cool. All right. So if you're looking at the screen, I want to show you something very cool because there was one question in the room asking uh, what moving averages do I use? So I use uh, the 200 simple uh, moving average. I use the 50 simple moving average. I use the 20 simple moving average and I use the 10 exponential moving average. 10 exponential moving average is more of a power trending type of, um, especially if you're day trading, but of course it's, it's of maximum importance if you're swing trading as well. I love pullbacks that are happening, for example, in ongoing really strong trends into the 10 exponential moving average. Also uh, like um, uh, if the price is, let's say downtrending if you have pullbacks into that 10. Uh, but definitely this is going to be, um, uh, and I'm still looking at charts guys. So you're not off the hook with trades again, <laughs> trades today. Uh, but the 20 simple moving average, for example, I'm gonna choose today's lecture on mini lecture, if you will, it's gonna be a like, two second lecture. Okay, it's going to be based on moving averages. 20 simple moving average, or I have, for the longest time, I have been using the 21 simple moving average. This is also a Fibonacci number, right? So if you're thinking about it, uh, you know, there's a strong correlation between Fibonacci and, um, you know, the um, technicals that we're using. So for example, the 21 simple moving average is derived from Fibonacci's, right? Uh, for example, pullback bars, uh, when you're seeing like one, two, three bar pullbacks, uh, these are some of the biggest and strongest uh, patterns that are developing because th three is also a Fibonacci number. Uh, five is also a Fibonacci number. So um, that there's a very strong correlation between Fibonacci numbers and the moving averages, the number of pullback bars that we're having. Uh, the setups that are forming and plus the Fibonacci extension, right? We don't need Fibonacci extensions here, for example, but we may use a Fibonacci extension if we see some kind of, you know, technical rotation that is happening in the market and especially um, from a higher time frame, from a weekly chart perspective, or even from a daily chart perspective. Uh, but for example, here, you have no reason to use uh, a Fibonacci uh, um um, retracement because this is a swing low to the swing high and here you have 100% retracement so you're back ground, you're back to ground zero and if you're uh if you're shrinking the chart a little bit you would see that basically we have been trading into really wide ranges in the past right so you have resistance here you have resistance here and then we have uh we have another range that is developing on top of the prior range, a little bit intersected, but typically into the top. All right, so I wanna show you something that is developing right now, and that is on the 15 minute. So I'm gonna zoom it in to show you the setup that is forming. All right, so we have an inside bar here. So I'm gonna tell you technically what's going to happen. This is more important than even taking the trade because I'm gonna teach you right now what to look for, how to fish, right? Uh, so um, you see this candle high, this is a decision candle. So the momentum has slowed down. We had a really strong momentum because we had the move down, we open, we move down, we open, we move down, and then we opened and we pressed up. So this is a rotation, right? We moved from, uh, we moved from red back into green. Because this is a 15 minute time frame. This time, 11 o'clock reacts much better to higher time frames than smaller time frames. 
uh, because we're closing in on the London session close. Now, the London session close has a massive role into trading because you could get an idea of distribution or accumulation into the uh, next 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. So bottom line is that this candle has just started to form within the last five minutes. Now it needs 10 more minutes for this candle to complete because this is a 15 minute candle. So until the time completes, if this price, you're going to see it right here, it's going to start trading above this high and the high is 15.052.25. And if we see a, a two to three ticks above this price, it's going to start entering a short squeeze. And the short squeeze target is going to be into the 80s and into the 85, which is a lot of money and a lot of tradable void. But compared to the risk, it's only going to be barely like, for example, one R. So that means you're going to risk $500. You're going to expect to make $500, which is fine. But it's going to go with a high probability because this is going to be a counter trend trade. And it's going to be determined by this inside bar. <clears throat> so the 10 EMA uh, in this side, so remember earlier we were talking about the 20 SMA. So the when the price is trading above the 20 SMA, you should be bullish. And the, when the price is trading below the 20 SMA, that is more of a bearish bias. And the price action is tending to follow that specific moving average. Uh, moving averages are dynamic price support resistance area. So what that means is that when the price is really distanced from any kind of moving averages, and we're using the 10, we're using the 50, we're using the 20, we're using the, uh, the 200, we're using what the industry is using and what the industry is basing their algorithms on. And that's the reason why we have selected these moving averages, because other than that, to be super honest, I would much prefer naked charts without any kind of indicator, because I don't like to have these spaghettis on my lines. I really don't like to have all of these horizontal lines either, but they're helping me visualize multi time frame analysis in only one chart. Because when you're day trading, you really don't have time to toggle back and forth or to watch all your A charts, you need to take decisions in an instant, like you saw, like we took that decision into NASDAQ, right? So when it comes to uh, moving averages, they can serve as support, they can serve as resistance. So they are the, uh, they are the ground for pullbacks. For example, if you're seeing the price that is pulling back into a 20 simple moving average, then that moving average is more likely to catch the price and you will see a setup developing into that location, into that area. And remember, these are areas, not exact numbers. So the more you understand that, the more you're going to be flexible into your trading decisions. And that's, that's how you win in this game. So you can see here that we have a, a massive support level that is also decided not only by higher time frames and from the daily, because we have a double bottom here, uh, and if we cross below this area, we're going to be bearish below. But in case we're going to get a short squeeze because we are into oversold area, right? You can see it right here. I'm using the William percent R. Now, William percent R is typically an indicator that shows you when, you know, a, shows you. And especially I like to trade it with divergence. We don't have any divergence right now. But it typically shows you um, when to buy the dip and how to buy the dip. And that is in strict correlation with price action. So at this moment, like I said, this decision is going to come in about right now because I've been talking for like another three to four minutes. Uh, this decision is going to come at 11.15. It's only 11.08 right now. So like I said, the decision is still going to be over this high until we, until we do so. And this 10 EMA right now is going to act like a magnet. It's going to suck the price up. So if you're going to see a trigger over 53, Okay, so we can put an alert right here. We can set an alert. So that's why I use limit orders and I set alerts. So for example, if you see the price over 53, okay, you're going to see the price getting sucked right into the 15.080. So you can put another alert here. So this is your trade. That's how you determine your trades. So this is for the bullish side. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it for the bearish side, for example, for a bearish trade, okay? And let me know if this is helpful. <clears throat> if not, we could just look at charts again from a different perspective. All right. When we trade below this 15,000, this is going to be the decision point. You could either take it short with half the size 
Okay. Short with half the size. What I mean by that. So if you're using, let's say 1% and let's say if your 1% is, I don't know, maybe it's $500, you're going to risk $250. So what that means is that not that you're risking literally $250 and you're going to say, oh, I'm going to take it here. I'm only going to risk $250. And if the price bounces to where your PL says 250, I'm going to get out. No, you position size for that. Okay, you position size for that. Um, and what that means is that it has a lower probability of following through lower. And of course, your decision is going to be hand in hand with the activity of the other indices because you saw at all times, I'm watching the Dow, the S&P and Russell because they all, when you have all the indices participating in sync, they will move in sync. So that means it's going to be like, trading is easy, like throwing a dart. You're like, oh, gee, I don't know. Which one should I take? You could take any trade or you could take, for example, you could take half the size S&P. Um, um, let's say they're going higher. You could take S&P long. You could take YM long. You could take Russell long. So you, you could even take quarters, right? You could take quarter size in YM, quarter size in ES, quarter size in NASDAQ, quarter size in RTY. Don't overly engage in one or another. But if you want to trade all the indices, by all means, okay? But it's also purely just, to, you know, it, it, trading is very personal. I like to make trading as non-personal as possible and then try to kind of like enforce my rules on you guys. Um, and you guys know in the trading room, the reason why I do that is because these rules were not created by me. I was very fortunate to be mentored for like three to four years, constantly every single day, like literally constantly every single day. So I had to do reports at the end of the day, what move with that. I had to do reports at the beginning of the day and all that. So I was heavily mentored and I had information drilled into my head. Just like you guys, I went through tons of open houses. I went through and I did because I wanted day trading to work for me. I'm coming from the investing field. I'm coming from the swing trading field and I wanted to stay home and produce an income. And this is how I produce my income. So because these rules are very strict uh, into algorithms. They're built into algorithms. Isn't it easier than telling you guys, hey, you know what? You have to develop your own trading plan. Trading is so personal. You have to develop your edge. You have to blow five accounts before you make it. You don't have to go through that pain. I did not go through that pain. I'm sorry to say this, but if you think that I'm going to come here and say, oh, I blew five accounts, no, I didn't. I did not even blow one account. I made money constantly because I was mentored. Um, so it was it, Peter. It's an institutional trader that mentored me. All right. So this is this this uh, system that I trade that I trade is a tweaked system from what I was taught and what institutions are doing. It's not something that, oh, I developed because I kind of like, I watch price action as I'm, I'm a self-developed trader. No, I'm not a self-developed trader. I had the information drilled into my head and I had this uh, plan, this trading plan that uh, I had to respect every single day. Okay. So I had this plan and I had to respect the plan every single day. I wasn't allowed to go outside of the box and say, oh, this time around, I think I'm going to find an entry elsewhere. No, you have to respect it. Uh, just as when you program an algo, right? When you program an algo, the algo is set to trigger at the price that you programmed it to. So trading is about programming your brain to react on certain patterns. And if you do not have the pattern, you do not have the trade. And when you do not see the trade and when you jump in, that is where your losses start, uh, you know, uh, taking over your winning trades. Because in trading, you guys know, it's all about having the big wins, the home runs. It's about having small wins. It's about having break-even trades. Because when we were in the NASDAQ trade, and even when we were in the uh, CL trade, I kept on mentioning, trail it higher. We're not going to be complacent and say, ah, we're going to let it ride. We have to chunk our money out. This is what day trading is about. When you're swing trading, it's totally different. And it's a different trading environment. All right. So something, um, you know, there are some things that are happening right now uh, that I want to show you. 
for example, we have just started a continuation candle and this uh, candle started 15 minutes ago. Uh, the high and the high of the scandal is right into the 200 simple moving average and it's right into a um, medium pivot right here of resistance uh, into the 40s. And then we have the poke. This is the real test. This is going to be the test because a lot of traders put their stops right here. Okay. So oftentimes you're going to see a washout before you see a short. Okay. So you're going to see a washout. What this means is that they're stopping out of their long positions because there are a lot of traders that are buying on support and have really tight stops and algorithms do that as well. <clears throat> so not only retail traders do that, but algorithms, 85% of the market volume is traded by algorithms. We have to respect the algorithms. It's not that, oh, I want to get in this trade because I think this and that. No, you have to think like an algo. Would an algo get in at that area? Okay. So only when we have a close below this um, bearish below area, then we can have positively higher odds for following through lower. And again, the, uh, the target would be into the 950. So this is a nice, juicy, tradable void. My only question is, where is my stop, right? So where is the stop going to be? So then you roll into smaller time frames because you're going to try to find some kind of a pivoted pivot or some kind of resistance, right? So you're going on the 30 minute. The only pivot that you have is all the way, uh, all the way into this top of 57. Then you're rolling in again and you're going smaller time frame. A smaller time frame, you're seeing 15. So do you have another pivot? No, but you do have a bear sandwich here. So that means that you have uh, you have this candle right here that has tried to hold. And this is the short squeeze that we've done here with a little bit of green. And now you're having the bears that are literally taking over. And you could see that they're taking out the whole domain where the bulls were. And they're pushed the price lower back into the support level. They're forcing them out of the game. But remember, this is a massive, massive support level. So right now, this is the biggest battle because it is the whole number, the whole number of times loves to form support on their own. So even if we don't have a technical support from a prior price action, from a pivot high or a pivot low or whatever, uh, the whole number will react as support into any kind of ongoing trades. So remember what I said, the number one thing that you're, that I do and I was taught to do is to never buy on support without confirmation. Confirmation is the setup. And if you buy off support, you're opening the chances 80% towards a failure because oftentimes institutions like to whip people out, whip traders out before you actually uh, before you actually rotate in price and decide on the directional bias. Brokers out there, and I don't think this is going to be a shock for you guys, brokers sell our data. When I trade in the trading room with all my traders and my traders can confirm, okay, this, uh, we have emergency stops. So we're using stops that are way below where any retail trader will put their stop for a day trade. Today was an exception with that because we had a heavy market, but typically we put wider stops, we positions for the position for those wider stops. And then as soon as we trigger, you saw what we did. We bring the stops uh, and we start trailing very, very fast. As soon as we hit target one, we are going to uh, move it, uh, move our stop a little bit higher. All right. So what you're seeing right now is a little bit of trying, uh, it's a stabilizing activity. OK, so the price action is trying to stabilize. OK, so right now, because we have uh, we are trading, um, you know, beyond that five minute that we have discussed and traced kind of like these levels right here. OK, this is still going to be a target. So this still remains valid. OK, and you can see that the slowdown and the momentum right here. So you can see that we're having lots of bottoming tails. These uh, bottom details are a sign of a slowdown of the bearish momentum. So the bulls are trying to take over. 
And you can see a little bit of bullish action right here. Still not very bullish, but we're still trying to hold the 15,000 and we're dancing around the 15,000. The bears and the bulls are dancing around the 15,000 and they are trying to decide who's going to take the next time sequence, uh, who's going to take control of the next time sequence. Is it going to be the bulls or is it going to be the bears? Now from this candle, because we just had, it's 1120 right now, we're 10 minutes into the London session close. Uh, we do have a doji decision here. We do have a 10 EMA, which is going to serve as resistance and target. And we have another resistance into the 37. So here's how trading is, uh, technical trading is established. You see this top right here, uh, 15017. Okay, 17 is, or 1725, 17 to 1725 is a trigger. So you could take this trade. I'm not gonna take another trade right now. Uh, into the close, but this becomes a trigger, okay? This becomes a trigger point. The stop will be the low here. See how it triggered? Okay, this is with confirmation that the rotation is happening into the bulls. The bulls are having right now the upper hand. The target for this trade is going to be 30 because this is where the declining 10 EMA is. And the 10 EMA is going to serve as dynamic resistance. When the price is going to hit into 30, because you are a scalper and this is against the smaller time frame trade, you're going to take your money and run. If the price is going to poke immediately over 30 and it's going to hit 33 to 35, you're still going to stay in the trade, but then you're going to put your stop at 30. So you see what I'm saying? Don't get yourself out of a trade too early, trail the trade. Okay, trail the trade. So right now, if the price is going to hit 30 and boom, blast over 30, just stay in. And as soon as you see 33, raise your stop to 30 where you want it to exit. This way, you're opening the doors to, towards higher prices into the 38 and even to the 40s. If the 40s are going to be surpassed, then we are going to look for, um, for a trade higher. So if I'm in a trade, I cannot explain this to you, how it happens and how it goes, but I can explain it to you right now because I think it's more important for you to understand how to trade than to actually take a trade, okay? You saw me, I took a I actually took two trades today and uh, I think it's super important to, for you to know how to trade. How to trade is more important than uh, you know, receiving a signal where to buy or where to sell. So we were raising, uh, we're moving higher, right? We're moving higher. Remember at 30, at 30. Okay. Awesome, Tim. Thank you. All right. So you can see that we're rising into the thirties, right? We have 29.75 for the high at this point, because you are very close to 30, you're going to put your stop and break even. Remember your entry was 17.25 or 17.75. This is like stress-free trading, literally, okay? Stress-free trading. Oh, thank you so much, Kevin. You're the best, okay? So this is decision point, guys, 29.75. Your stop is at break even. Here it is. You have 29.730. This is where your decision goes, right? Because you have hit target. This is also a dynamic resistance. You either take your money and run, right? If you're trying to grow your account, there's nothing wrong with taking target at target one. There's nothing wrong with that. This is how you grow your account. Randy, are you here? No greed, right? Randy's like, no greed, just green. This is his motto, okay? This is what it should be. So now for those of you that, let's say, can trade multiple contracts, now you have to stop at break even. At this point, you have a risk zero trade. How awesome is this? And it's stress-free, guys. You don't have to stress over it. So when the price is, is actually moving higher towards this 10 EMA, and if it's going to close above the 10 EMA, it's going to start gaining some traction. So this is when you know that the bulls are dominating for the last five minutes. OK, so always keep tabs on the clock, right? You can see the clock right now. It's 1124 and 20 seconds. There's a reason why that clock is there, not to show you when your coffee break is, but it's showing you when these candles are closing, because now in 30 minutes, this candle is going to close. And based upon where this close is going to happen, if it's going to close above this 20 SMA and above this pivot right here into the 38, you will have massive traction into the next five minutes, okay? 
<laughs> Kevin, oh no, you're the best. Okay, so you could see that there is a huge decision here because we have this linear pivot uh, into the 37. We're still holding higher, okay? Now this is the new time sequence. You see the brand new candle because it's 1125. Now, if we start poking above 36 to 37, we only have a high of 35 and a half. We need 36 to 37, and then we need to poke above 38. It's a huge decision. Now you need to, now this is going to go higher. Okay. And the next point is going to be 45. We're going to have the next one into the 50, then 60, and then uh, the 20 SMA is going to be your next trap. Okay. Is that helpful, guys? Is that helpful? Just give me a one if this is helpful. Now, there's another thing that is happening. Okay. Don't forget multiple time frames, multiple time frames. Okay. This is the 15 minute, right? This is a 15 minute. You can see that the 15 minute um, dominated domain is from a high of 38. So, this is where the bears came in, right? They came in at 38.25, right at the very high right here. And they took the price lower to 97.97. Uh, 97. Now, this is a bull's domain. The more the bulls are going to take dominance into this time frame, and they still have four minutes left to prove themselves. If the bulls are going to take over this high, the price will go higher and the five minute is going to have more dynamic and it's going to start pushing towards the 70. Because remember, we have targets into the 50, 45 to 50, right? And close into the 60s. Now, this is going to open the door for targets into the 70s. So you see how I'm not very quick at shorting when we are into a massive support. And this is where all the traders are losing all their, all their money, okay? Because they go like, oh, I just did a short squeeze. I got some money there and I could take it to the downside. No, no, look at the context because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the rest of the indices. This, is, this happens to be a little bit weaker, but I wanted to do a case analysis on something that had a major decline. So you know how to trade something that has a major decline like that. Okay, so in about less than three minutes, there's another thing that is going to happen. I'm going to roll out into a 30 minute. Now, if you know anything about candlesticks, this is a massive regain of the domain, right? We have support here and we're getting some really big dominance from the bulls because when 30 minutes ago, or let's say 27 minutes ago, right? When this uh, candle started to form, uh, it opened and it slashed below 15,000, making everybody super bearish into that point. Okay, super bearish. Now, the more green this candle is going to build, the more it will rise. And remember, we have targets into the 50s, 60s, 70s. Now, this is going to roll, keep on rolling, keep on rolling, keep on rolling. Guess where? All the way into the 80s, right? 80s is a huge target. And then we have the 90s. This is going to be the ultimate target into the next 30 minute to an hour. Okay, this is how uh, this is how you trade rolling in and rolling out of trades. Okay, this is how you build confidence with multi time frame analysis. All right, so let me share the other screen where we have all our watch. Okay, here we go. All right, and I wanted to add something here. Okay, let's just go here to the five minute. Let's put apples to apples, right? Okay, we like to compare time frames, but we want to have the same time frame, so we kind of have an idea of the momentum into everything. Okay, so you can see how the price is really trying to uh, trying to hold into this tiny MA. Remember that by the end of the time sequence, and we have one minute left, less than one minute left. If the price is going to start engaging towards the 37 to 38, even 39, there's, listen, one minute, it's a long time when you're trading and when you're in a trade. But the more we engage for higher, we open up the possibility. And I mean, 90%, 80 to 90% that we're going to get a continuation and we're going to snap back to 60. Okay, it's not hard. It's just technical analysis. And everything that I'm telling you guys right here is foundations of candlesticks, uh, technical analysis, multi time frames. That's it. Okay, that's it. 
All right, so um, it's not hard and you only have to learn it once. You don't have to go over and over and over and over and over again, okay? You only learn it once and you know what's going on. All right, so I guess you guys can see the screen right now with the, the six charts, right? You guys can see it. Okay, cool. Financials are extremely strong, continue to be strong, continue to lead uh, really well into the highs. Um, the Dow stocks are leading as well higher. Um, and um, I'm seeing that we're also getting some pressure into the NASDAQ stocks. So <clears throat> NASDAQ stocks are still under pressure. Apple, Google, Amazon still in a range, but still under pressure. NVIDIA as well. Microsoft pulling back to the 20 SMA. So still under pressure. So NASDAQ stocks are under pressure right now. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to mention, because we are right now into 1130, this is the official cutoff for the London session, depending on how they position, if we would have had a really hard sell into the London session, we would have continued with the sell. Um, <laughs> okay, so we would have continued with the sell. But as you can see, we're trying to form a bottom into the London session. So that means that the uh, London traders uh, have, uh, have continued to accumulate a little bit into the 1130 timeframe because they, they did not hard sell, okay? So right now, when you're doing your uh, post analysis <clears throat> for the trading session, this is typically when I wrap things up. So if I'm not in a trade and I'm not looking for another trade right now, this is where you should be wrapping up. Um, I don't trade a lot, but when I trade, I go in, out, done. Okay, so I I love instant gratification, and uh, I love being focused. You cannot be focused eight hours a day. Okay, you cannot be focused eight hours a day. Two hours is more than enough. Okay, so we start at nine thirty into uh, eleven thirty, and we wrap it up. So now it's time to do a little bit of pre-planning of what's going to happen in the afternoon trading session to see if there should, if there can be any opportunities. And in fact, we did discuss some opportunities based on the 30 minute. 30 minutes are super important because they go from 30 minute segments and they carry it a lot of weight. I love the 30 minute charts. Here it is. And uh, I'm putting them on the 30 minute always as I'm going into 1130 because I want to see how the uh, psychology behind the candlesticks is uh, when, um, when we see the price action development. So based on the 30 minute, we're still seeing that uh, the Dow is still holding, bottoming till, bottoming till. So there's one takeaway from today that we're going to remember is that bottoming tails are very important because they show the fuel that the bulls are make a bulls are um uh, the bulls are making for taking price higher. So you can see bottoming tail, bottoming tail right here. So that means that there has been some buying activity, and you can see that the body of this candle is trading within the high and the low. So that means that as long as it's trading between the high and the low, uh, the uh traders and there are positions still for uh for the upside. So when and if the Dow is going to trade above 154, so 154 to 154, 155, this is going to be the trigger for higher, 154 to 155. This is going to uh, trigger a long that will carry the price into the 180 to 186. This is this horizontal dotted line is the next resistance. The next one is going to be into 200, 220, 250. So it's going to be like in small increments to the upside. On the other hand, this is very interesting because this has the potential for a more massive short squeeze contingent on all the indices that are going to continue higher. NASDAQ is has already triggered right now. See the trigger? Uh, the trigger is 41. All right. So the trigger is 41. You can expect NASDAQ, but trades that are setting up right now have the tendency to run a little bit later until one o'clock or 1.30 or even two o'clock or even into the end of the day. So you may be in the trade for a longer period of time and they carry a little bit of wider stops. That shouldn't be a problem because you will position size for your risk. If your risk cannot accommodate your stop, then skip the trade and move on to the next one. 
We have a very interesting formation in SMP. SMP has an inside bullish activity. So you can see that we had the price move down and we have an inside, uh, inside price action. So what this inside price action is telling us is that if the price is gonna start trading above 31, the price may start 31, 31, 25, 31, 50. All right, you have to get it a little bit higher above the high. Uh, then the price will rise higher. Don't forget that we have a prior all-time high. This is also a prior resistance from last week's high into the 33s. And this will represent your target one, okay? And your target two is going to be into the next resistance of 35. And then your next target is going to be into the 38 and so on, okay? So these are uh, three trades, for example, ready for the afternoon. And then we have also a Russell, Russell that had already triggered and had an inside uh, doji uh, into the 37.5. And that was actually the trigger point for it. It's actually running higher based on a one hour trigger as well above this high. And it will continue higher into the 41 and into the 45. Uh, day trading is a lot more uh, challenging than swing trading. And swing trading, you don't have to compete with algorithms. In day trading, you have to be excellent at reading technical analysis, excellent at reading price action. There's no room for average or below average. You have to be on the top of your game because when you are trading, when you're day trading, you're tr day trading with algorithms, which are the most sophisticated systems in existence, programmed to make money every single day. All right, so um, this is uh, this is the pre-planning, for example, for um, for the afternoon trading session. And uh, let's go to prices. We have some prices here. All right, so let's get down to prices. And I hope you guys, uh, you know, kind of like enjoy the session today. We're still going to look at some trades in the market. Okay, so we have some prices. We are going to select two winners every single day. And you guys, the winners are going to, um, the winners are going to have access one month to this trading room. And they are also going to trade with me. And not only that, but they are going to receive um, an on-demand course for risk management and position sizing because the rest, guess what? I can handle it, okay? And I'm gonna help you guys. All right, so before we dive into um, the uh, actual price itself, and by the way, the first one that is going to type in the right question, the right answer is going to get the price. So get ready, guys. It's going to be an A, B, or C, or D <laughs> option, okay? Um, awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. So we have a class that is coming up August 23rd to 27th. It's a five-day class. I've already started reviewing the material and I have already started to add some more material to it that I will uh, provide on demand outside of this five day. Because if we were to put everything together, it would be like a 10 day affair, which it was in the past, but we have uh, decided to do this uh, five day live. And then you are going to have um, some material like trading psychology, reading charts, you know, all that stuff that you need to um, know uh, after all the material has been taught and that is going to be on the mat. So this is a five day course. It's live. I'm going to be teaching the course. It's a no homework class, like literally no homework. So you don't have to do any work. Uh, and uh, it is uh, um, live. Like I said, it's from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you get tons of bonus courses uh, with this. So um, if you're interested, I will definitely um, uh, send you every single bonus that you're going to receive with this course. With the additional, you get a, a lab course. Uh, you get um, a swing trading for futures course that is going to be recorded. So lot, lots and lots and lots of courses that are going to be and bonus on bonus. And if you go to our website, all of these courses 
are $5,000 each. So you're going to receive this because we haven't done an open house, to be very honest, I think in two or three years. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, crazy. Um, it, it's, it's a lot. It goes a lot because I don't really explain that much <laughs> when we're in trades because most of the individuals, the, most of the traders that are in the training room have already taken the class. So they know exactly what to do. Uh, you heard Kevin in here. He said, oh, yeah, this is textbook. Yeah, because he knows the setup, right? So my uh, <laughs> my um, uh, goal is to teach you setups of how to trade. And then, of course, I take the trades, okay? I trade live with you guys every single day. All right, so the Power Course is also going to have a special offer. It's going to have access to the Futures Trading Room, which is pretty much the same format like we had right now, like today until December 31st. So you're getting four and a half months access in the trading room, which is about $1,350. And by the way, the price is going to go up to $7,000 for this course in September. So next month. Okay. So if you want to take advantage of that and now drum roll. Okay. Let's go guys. Let's go. <laughs> Jack, you already know. <laughs> Guys, you are so much fun. I love you guys. You're, you're the best. Ken and Jack, you guys are the best. Okay, first thing, price, right? What ancient civilization gave women equal rights to the throne? Was it A, ancient Greeks, B, Mayans, or C, ancient Egyptians? And the winner is, oh my gosh, you guys are typing too fast. Okay, we're going to give away two prizes, two prizes, two prizes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Peter, you got that right. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me see, let me see, because I need to scroll up. Okay, good thing that I'm recording this session. Okay, good thing that I'm recording this session, because I'm also recording the chat here. Wow. And by the way, guys, we're over 1,500 people in here. Okay. Okay, we have winners. Okay, we have... Oops, hold on, hold on. There were some more posts in here. Okay. I want to make it right. Okay, hold on. Okay, Michael Weed, Michael Weed, prize number one. Please email me at info at tradeoutloud.com. And we're going to be sending you the prize. And the second winner is, drum roll, Jack Lasher. I hope I pronounced your name right. All right. So it's Michael and Jack. Please email me at info at tradeoutloud.com. Remember, we have more prices to come. <laughs> Yay! I hope you're going to find it super fun. I mean, we do have a lot. We do have a lot of fun in the room. We do have a lot of fun in the room. Okay, so uh, let's go back to charts right now. All right, tomorrow uh, we have a market question. So I prepared a market question for you guys, <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go, let me reshare the screen. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit fun. Okay, cool. All right, so what we have in the market right now, guys, uh, like I said, we're getting ready to trigger into the Dow, okay? Getting ready to trigger into the Dow. Your entry is going to be 155. Your stop is going to be 100. Your target is going to be 180. 
And then if it breaks over 185, it's going to be 200 and 220, okay? Uh, S&P has already triggered above that 31, okay? So above 31, here's your trigger, your stop, unfortunately, it's right to the um, New York trading session low, just trigger right now. And your target is, first target is going to be the old time high. Your second target is going to be this dotted resistance line into the 35, 35 and a half. And your third target is going to be 38. From this one, this point up, it's going to be 40. NASDAQ, short squeezing. It made a high into the 55. Like I said, it's going, it's a little slower because it has relative weakness but it doesn't mean that it's not gonna go there. So at this point, because you have reached that 50, remember the 50 and 60 area that were targets that we discussed about on smaller time frames, right? Remember the five minute time frame, And we said that if it's gonna go higher, it's gonna go into the 10, it's gonna go into the 20, bingo, right? And you can see that right now, the price is squished in between moving averages. And you can see that we have a support level here. Now you could put your stop at 36, right? 36, 37, okay? 30, yeah, 36 makes sense for the stop. So right now we're getting back to the 30 minute. You can see that you had a trigger into 39. You could actually put your stop at 39. So as of right now, you took profits into 50, stress-free trading. You took profits into 50, here it is. And you have the rest of your position with the risk zero trade. So if the, if the price is going to turn around, guess what? You're not going to lose anything. So how awesome is that? Okay. And all of these techniques we teach in our course. Okay. Hey, Mark, test, test, test one, test two. Ray, what's more fun than making money? Making more money. You got it. We got it. You got it. And I'm going to tell you and let you in on a little secret. I love money. Everybody in the trading room adores money. We love money and we make money almost every day. <laughs> okay. All right. A bottom line at the end of the month, we like to cross it into the green. Okay. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as crossing the line into the red. Okay. Of course, the link to the course. Sorry about that. It's like, boy, I'm doing a really bad job here at promoting stuff but okay so okay so you could also email me at info at trade ally.com but uh, you get all the perks okay uh here's the course we teach way more than we have uh, advertised on the website we just don't want to um make it available to everybody right because there's a lot of people that are cop copying our stuff of course they cannot copy our um material but anyways so i hope you guys enjoyed today this is a wrap and uh, you can see how the price is reacting based upon our analysis and this is technical analysis 101 okay technical analysis 101 i'm not doing anything else that is special anything else that we're not teaching so it's just pure technical analysis price action candlesticks that's it that's it not a, uh, you know, it's not something sophisticated. It's not something that you cannot do. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. That's it. It's just a matter of how you read the market. All right. <laughs> David, you have too much fun in the room. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. So this is a wrap for now. Remember, this session was recorded. You can review it. Um, we will send out the recordings a little bit later today. Uh, and remember, use the same login for uh, the uh, session for tomorrow. It will also be um, resent to you. So if you're a register, you shouldn't have any problems. Just click the link, but I will send you a reminder with the um, uh, with the login uh, for today's session. So you won't have to worry about that if you have deleted your email. So this is a wrap today, guys. I hope you had a good session and it was educational. We made some money. We, um, you know, taught a little bit and we're going to try to um, do more into tomorrow. So remember, we have three days together. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So tomorrow we should have more price action um, uh, into the open. 
So that's going to be great. Today was a little bit kind of chaotic because of uh, because of the news that came in at 11, uh, the vote. Thank you so much, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy the afternoon and disconnect from the computer. It's time to have some fun. This is what trading is all about. A little bit of trading and a whole lot of fun and enjoy your life. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. I will see you tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed today's uh, session with me. Have fun, guys. Bye. See you tomorrow.